Assalamu alaikum. Invite endless blessings into your home. Please subscribe now. The button below. Sadi, can you explain more about Duru Sharif salawat? Duru Sharif? That the, that's the whole tariqah, uh, that would be whole you know hours and hours of, of talking but the immensity of Durud al-Sharif and its blessings is something that can't be even understood. What type of power, what type of reality, what type of blessings are dressing and blessing the servant. The way is to the heart of Sayyidina Muhammad and the magnificent power of Durud al-Sharif to be dressed by the nazar of Sayyidina Muhammad But most important for this month's tajalli is to understand istighfar and to shut off and to dress ourselves to flow upon that track of reality into the heart of Sayyidina Muhammad And Durud al-Sharif we have the whole website is on the power of salawats and reaching towards the Muhammadan reality inshaAllah. Sayyidi, how to make uh, our muraqabah connection stronger? Practicing every day inshaAllah. Just like we, we talked last week is, is to practice on a daily basis on how to make the connection, that how to visualize yourself. The awrad is the awrad, to sit at the end of your salah, put salawats and Qur'an on, visualize yourself at Madinat Munawwara, visualize yourself with awliyaullah and saying that, I'm nothing, I'm nothing Ya Rabbi, I'm nothing. That let me just to breathe in this ocean of power and see yourself as nothing in the presence of Rosa Sharif, in the presence of Madinat al Munawwara, in the presence of these awliyaullah that I'm nothing and learn how to breathe, learn how to, to feel the energy. But again everything that we're teaching it's built upon a system. So people who tune in and they say, well how do we do meditation? Yeah that's a whole system, that's why email us. Because then Yahya will send a, like a, a, re, a reply form that once all of this is based on understanding your wudu, understanding energy, the importance of sanctifying your energy, purifying your energy, making sure your energy is strong and then you sit for your tafakkur and your contemplation on a daily basis on just breathing and feeling the presence of these awliyaullah. That I want to be with you, I want to be dressed by your lights that what Allah has given to you, dress me. Don't expect to see them and just feel them. Everybody was given a basic package and we described many years ago in, in training. You're like a computer that came with a basic software. So right now close your eyes wherever you are and whoever's hearing this at whatever time you're hearing it, just close your eyes. Gently hold your thumb, relax your heart and I want you to visualize Mickey Mouse. I don't know if in Pakistan you have Mickey Mouse, is Mickey Mouse? <laughs> huh? Is that mouse? Look like a rat, has two big ears and a smile. Eh? It's so easy to see Mickey Mouse and it's right there. Why? It's in your basic package, came in your basic software. Now through your practices and training your software has to be upgraded, right? You don't get just a basic phone and now you're gonna download you know 264 megabyte apps, your phone is gonna crash. So the whole process of learning and slowly, slowly trying to build your energy, listen to the zikr, listen to the teachings. There's thousand videos 
When somebody says, oh I need a wazifa to do, no, no you should actually be sitting down and watching a video, put headphones on wherever you are, watch a video so that you become very familiar with the shaykh, very familiar with those teachings, very familiar with that understanding so that you're entering into his ocean of reality. You hear him, you sense him, you understand how he talks, the reality that he's talking about it's like something that you're eating from, it's not something occasionally you get involved in. It's you immerse yourself in anything that you want to learn. As a result when you're meditating your, your package will begin to slowly be upgrade, upgraded so that, Ya Rabbi let me to be with them and then with my heart I know that they're in front of me. And Ya Rabbi I see a picture of Medina to Munawwar Rosa Sharif that let me to keep that image in my mind's eye. And as your software is being upgraded and the energy being sent to you is becoming more and more in every zikr, you make your madad, you keep yourself in wudu, you come into the zikr. If you need put headphones so that you can isolate from every other ex external sound so that you bring yourself to be wholly present with the shaykh. See yourself right on the corporate with them that I'm present with them and that bring me into that presence, shaykh will lift you and bring you in an instant into their presence. Then you're closing and visualizing I'm with them, wa qunuma sadiqeen Allah command, have a consciousness and keep the company of the sadiqs, not in physicality Allah doesn't care about your body. But in your spirituality that you're always with them, Ya Rabbi let me always to be with them. I'm with you, I don't see you, I don't deserve to see you, I'm not yet clean. And your vision with your faith is that, I'm with them, I'm with him, I'm with him, I'm with him. Until Allah begin to grant his sincerity, your software is upgraded and you begin to feel and see that you're in Medina and Mecca and that you feel in your heart, in your heart's eye, not your physical eye. The eye of your faith that I see Mawlana Shaykh, I see Madinatul Munawwara, I see Rosa Sharif and I'm breathing in that presence. I'm asking to be dressed from that presence, I'm nothing, I'm nothing and just breathe. Say, Ya Rabbi I just came to get the, the fires and the energy of that association and that reality. And that's tafakkur, keep doing every day, every day until the beatific fragrance of that reality opens, the beatific energy of that presence begins to open. In which I'm sitting there and I begin to play the salawats and say, Ya Rabbi I wish I could recite these salawats at Rosa Sharif for the presence of Sayyidina Muhammad Let this beatific recitation be my praising upon that reality. And visualize when these salawats are playing these are all malaika that are coming and moving around that Rosa Sharif and that these malaika are coming and dressing upon that reality and Prophet is sending his Divinely fires upon the soul. And every time this meditation you keep doing, keep doing consistency until it catches. So means they keep practicing, keep practicing. Every student has a little candle in their heart. Every insan was given a, a little light like a candle. Your life, your life's responsibility was to manage that light, defend and protect that light. Don't think that faith is something you can do anything you want, attack the shaykh however you want, speak however you want, yell and scream however you want, do any type of thing that you want. You're blowing out your candle. Faith is, is very fragile and Sayyidina Muhammad described it's like a shirt it will be worn out. Ask Allah in every prayer to renew your faith so that this candle becomes lit. The candle when you practice the meditation let this light to, to grow Ya Rabbi. When I'm receiving their fires, their fires is building this light, building this light, building this light 
until the point you will become lit. When you are lit means an energy hits you and you went from candle into the beginning formation of a star. And the first level of sainthood and the formation of sainthood is a najm in which you are becoming a sun. You are been granted a Divine light that is eternal. Your heart is now lit, you're heating up all the time, your hands are hot, the back of your neck heats up. If they take your temperature all your clothes are wet from the heat that you're producing. That servant is lit, that servant is on the process of sainthood to achieve these lights and these realities. That which is lit is eternally lit. Then through all their training they're going to develop that light to become stronger and stronger, stronger and stronger until it begins to make salawats and become super powerful. As a result that sun it feeds off of difficulties, it takes the waste in the galaxy, brings it in to its atmosphere and gravitational pull and as a result it uses that garbage as a fuel. And what happens when the sun is burning a fuel? It produces a diya, it produces immense lights that are coming out. And Sayyidina Muhammad described, my sahabi they are like stars, najm on a dark night. So anyone should understand the reality of a star formation. But until you achieve that your faith is very frail, don't live life trying to blow it out. And these awliyaullah come into our life to teach us how to nourish it, protect it and begin to try to spark it so that to take it from a temporary to an eternal reality. And Mawlana Shaykh would describe the word da'im is so beautiful, da'im that which is eternally because there's lit that you achieved your eternal light and eternal reality, inshaAllah. Sayyidi, how can we start understanding our seven names? How can we know about them? Will that be known during meditation? Yeah. Understanding the seven names is more important who knows himself will know his Lord that this process of knowing oneself is the journey. So when I look to myself and the depth of that holy hadith who knows his nafs will know his Rabb of what Sayyidina Muhammad was describing is that you don't have to die to find your Lord. You don't have to physically die to find your Lord and that which governs the entire universe, your journey starts by looking inward and not outward. And the most difficult journey is the journey inward. So we just described now in the meditation and we just described it in the light that that was it. Do you understand how to build your light? Do you understand how to nourish your light? Do you understand that what are the lords that are governing you now that trying to destroy that light, right? Drinking, smoking, anger, those whom are governed by anger it's disbelief. Every time they let anger and rage overtake them it's like a tornado on that light trying to extinguish it because in one instant you can harm somebody harm yourself and do something that takes complete light and faith away that the, the candle will be blown and that person perishes not in an eternal state. So first was to know all the lords that govern me and my character, that I go through all of those 
and reach towards sincerity and mukhlas in which I've been granted from Allah to be a sincere servant. And in my sincerity Allah begin to open to myself who I am and what the name of this name, of my dunya name, what it means, what its reality. And I have seven names in seven paradises. And what are those names and what is the support of that name upon myself and how that name is to support me on my journey in dunya and on my journey into the realities of the heavens. So very deep, that's a very deep reality. We have to conquer all of the badness and the trash. Sayyidi, since our difficulties in life are preordained, what is the best adab to benefit from these difficult challenges, hardships in our life? The best adab to deal with difficulties is telling ourselves that it's already been written and that, Ya Rabbi did I make the right choices and did I have the correct character? And that because the person if he's from or she's from Ahl Tafakkur they're contemplating everything. Every time a test comes they contemplate, was this a result of bad character? Or was this result of Allah wanting to raise a darajat? You know you make a turn and you enter into a wrong neighborhood you're going to have a lot of difficulty. So am I making the wrong choice in that difficulty coming? Then I still have to increase my salawats, increase my practices, control my, my anger, my bad characteristics, make and improve my muraqabah so that my communication is coming correct. If I'm doing everything that I perceive to be good because everyone it takes an account of themselves that's why every night is a muhasaba. Say difficulty came and, oh yeah shaykh everything's good but you don't say about how you just fought like last week a hor horrific fight, you yell and scream at all sorts of things. Of course then difficulty came your way. If we say, no in my true and sincere understanding of myself, I pray that Allah be happy with me, I tried my best, I did my zikrs, my occasional up and down inshaAllah no problem. But this then is just a test Allah sending for me to have sabr. And in my sabr training was that I expected nothing and I was happy with everything. As soon as you expect people to call you a specific time, people to do for you a specific chore, a specific gift, a specific anything, that specificity is where shaitan is going to play. You expect that I was going to do this and I thought something would open from Allah I'm going to do this and something would open from this person. Take all, all of what we expect out of life. If we can destroy those expectations we would be so happy with whatever comes. I don't expect a gift, I don't expect anything, oh mashaAllah look something happened. But as soon as you expect, we said before the kids would expect a gift and you come with like a book they're gonna beat you up. So, what's this? Baba what happened? Was it supposed to be like that? And then Allah saying, do you see that character? How I can give you anything? when you're expecting something maybe completely ridiculous to what I want to give you and had I given it to you would have caused you great harm. Because don't ask that which will harm you and most people asking in, in, incessively too much that which would harm them. Especially money, most people if they're granted money would definitely harm them. They would find themselves not doing any zikr, any practices and everything forbidden. So it means in our life is about understanding, not asking for anything, being happy with everything, living a life of sabr and that Allah knows best. And if we did do bad things and things that Allah not pleased with, harming the other people, yelling, screaming, fighting, shouting, 
all of these they have consequences and that's why then istighfar. And that's why people who make istighfar they make excessive amount of istighfar. It's different than making salawat. Istighfar is, is that you are asking Allah's forgiveness. If a hammer is headed towards somebody you have to make istighfar. It's a different tajalli, different reality because every time you make istighfar you're asking, Ya Rabbi astaghfirullah al-azim bi azimat al-azim by your sifat al-azim, I'm begging your forgiveness. And the reply from Allah inshaAllah Bismillahir Rahmanir Raheem that He dressed the servant with the secret of Bismillahir Rahmanir Raheem. That's a different dress upon the soul. And when you making istighfar for ourselves then make istighfar for our children because they're not making istighfar and you don't know what they do behind the closed doors or what they say with friends and what they do. So we make istighfar for them especially if they're growing older, you don't even see your kids and what they're doing. So you make istighfar for them and then how awliya were trained is that they make so much istighfar that it's even for their community, Ya Rabbi forgive them for they know not what they do. Sayyidina Isa salam kept asking, Allah said, I'm going to punish them, they made shariq and they called you Allah. Did you say that to them? How angry Allah was, did you tell them to say that? Say, Ya Rabbi Stafira, you know when I was amongst them what I was saying and now that I'm not with them Ya Rabbi forgive them. They are your creation, you want to destroy them destroy but they're your creation Ya Rabbi Tawbah. So even Sayyidina Isa salam was making istighfar for his nation, Prophet making istighfar for their nation. And then this Muhammadan haqqaiq is teaching us, make istighfar, ask people's forgiveness. You have to ask for forgiveness to Allah to grant that forgiveness. And those whom are heedless, the biggest trick from shaitan is to inspire you not to make tawbah. Well you're so good, you're so great, why do you have to make tawbah? Because he put a look on it because that has its own tajalli and its own reality. When you ask for forgiveness Allah said, ask me and I forgive you. And for all our loved ones and all our community then that's the cleaning, cleaning, cleaning. So you don't put on your beautific dress when you're najis, right? Because I have a beautiful suit, do you, do you have a junub and najis and say, I'm going to go put that suit on? No. So what do you do first? You shower, you clean. The showering was the istighfar. Washing, 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 then you beautify yourself with Salawat al Nabi. Then I, I feel ashamed to even ask Prophet I haven't made my istighfar yet. How am I going to bring the ruhaniyat of Prophet and these sins are upon me? The sins of my children and my loved ones are upon me, the sins of my community are upon me. I'm going to go with this dirtiness into the presence of Sayyidina Muhammad and throw that dirtiness upon Prophet's reality? Or we sit and busy ourselves washing, cleaning, washing, cleaning, Ya Rabbi I can do no more, forgive me. Tawbat abdin zalimeen. And that's why then in the app in the fajr it's all the big Sultanul Tawbah, the, the king salawats and the king istighfars to why? To wash everything clean and now I'm presentable to make my salawats on Sayyidina Muhammad with that ihtiram and that respect, that light inshaAllah to dress our soul and bless our soul so that the ruhaniyat of Prophet stick to us, dress us and bless us. Subhana rabbika rabbil izzati amma yasifoon, as salaamun al mursaleen, walhamdulillahi rabbil alameen, bi hurmati Muhammad al Mustafa wa bi siri Surat al Fatiha. Click the link now to subscribe.